Okay, in this video we're going to look at something called Fermat's Little Theorem. So if you take P to be a prime, then if you have the GCD of A and P is equal to 1, where A is any integer, then A to the power of P minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod P. Okay, so let's get into the proof. So what we want to do for the proof is to consider the following set of numbers, S, which equals A, 2A, 3A, up to P minus 1 times A, and then P times A. And now, here, we want to claim that all elements of S are incongruent modulo p. So in other words, if you take the residue of all of these elements mod p, you get different numbers, and since there are p of them, that means you would get the residues 0, um, 1, 2, up to p minus 1. So in other words, uh, their residues mod p form the set, maybe we'll call it s prime, which is equal to 0, 1, 2, up to p minus 1. Good. So that being said, we'll prove this claim as it's written here, and then this will be an equivalent uh, statement for this claim that we'll use later in the proof. So what we'll do is we'll take two elements of s, and then we'll show that they cannot be congruent modulo p. So let's take um, maybe k times a and l times a in s. And so now notice that tells us that 1 is less than or equal to k, which is not equal to l, and that's all less than or equal to p. Good, because that's the form of uh, the elements of S. Great, and now let's suppose that K times A is congruent to L times A mod P. Good, but that means that uh, K minus L times A is divisible by P just using the definition of congruence modulo P, but that tells us that P divides A or P divides K minus L. Now we know that P cannot divide A because the GCD of P and A is one, so let's write that down. So this is impossible because GCD of P and A equals 1, and then this is impossible, and that's uh, because 1 is less than or equal to K, which is not equal to L, which is less than or equal to P. So what this would mean is that K minus L would have to be either exactly equal to P, which is not possible given this setup uh, of the values of k and l, or it would mean, need to be a multiple of p, which is again not possible given this setup of values of k and l. So we get that these are all incongruent modulo p. Good, so that means this set s and this set s prime have, are the same in terms of residues modulo p, which tells us that if we take the product of all of the elements of S and the product of all of the elements of S prime um, mod P, we should get the same thing, but that's not super interesting because zero is one of the terms. So let's take zero out of each one and now take the product of what's left over. So that tells us that A times 2A 
times 3a all the way up to p minus 1 times a is congruent to um, p minus 1 factorial mod p. Now notice because if we take the product of everything in s prime, we get 1 times 2 up to p minus 1, but that's p minus 1 factorial. Great. So now let's see what's left over. This gives us a to the power p minus 1 times another p minus 1 factorial, which is congruent to p minus 1 factorial mod p. Great. And now we can use uh, Wilson's theorem to rewrite p minus 1 factorial on each side by negative 1. So that tells us that negative a to the p minus 1 is congruent to negative 1 mod p. And finally, we can cancel the negatives from both sides, and that will give us a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. And that finishes the proof of Fermat's little theorem. So I'll have some other videos where we do some examples of applications of Fermat's little theorem.